Hello, my name is Jeff Hall. It's great to have you here with me today. In this video, I want to discuss the Cisco UCS architecture, the Unified Computing System, a revolutionary new product from Cisco. It's about two years old now, and just really taking the market by storm. For those that haven't made the plunge yet into the UCS and you're looking to learn just a little bit more about it, then that's what this video is for. Matter of fact, a little series of videos here and where we're going to lay out the architecture of the UCS, look at the signal flow, the components, the connectivity, all the good pieces and parts here. And in this first video, I just want to do a basic layout of the components. So with the UCS, what we're talking about is a clustered solution. And it's going to be a two-node cluster, two fabric interconnects that form the brains of the cluster, if you will. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw those up here. We're going to have two fabric interconnects, and we'll draw them just like this. And we're going to have an A side and a B side. All right, so we're going to have an A fabric and a B fabric. In fact, what you'll see with the UCS is that we're going to have a very symmetrical fabric A, fabric B uh, presentation here. So on the fabric interconnects themselves, they can be a 6120, they can be a 6140 model, they could even be a 6248 for the new hardware, right? And uh, this all depends on which number of fixed SFP Plus style ports we have. So the first type of ports we're going to have, I'm just going to draw over here on the left. There's five of them, and you can see they're sort of in a little square pattern with the, uh, the left, the right port being in the middle. So we have our L1 port, our L2 port, our management zero port, management one, and then our console right there. And it's just a typical console port that you would be familiar with from Cisco. The L1, L2 port, I'm logically going to draw just like this. Those connect between the two fabric interconnects, L1, L1, and then L2 to L2. And this is for the cluster management. This is where the heartbeat is communicated between our primary and our subordinate nodes. For management purposes, we're going to have a primary subordinate. And the primary is where our read-write actions are going to happen on the configuration database, which is stored on the internal 4 gig flash memory of the Fabric Interconnect. The, uh, the database itself is an XML-based configuration database. So we're going to see that not only will we communicate heartbeat between these two, which is the subordinate's way of knowing if the primary is dead yet. You know, he's asking, Hey, are you dead yet? Are you dead yet? Can I take over, please, please? And the primary is saying, nope, I'm still here. Hang tight, I'm good. We're also going to communicate the configuration synchronization between the, the two Fabric Interconnects. So we, we sync the config database as well. So we have these ports for that. The Management Zero port is going to be our out-of-band management. That's where we would SSH or even, you know, if you choose to Telnet, that's where we would also uh, connect to the UCS manager for both the the graphical GUI environment and the command line CLI. And if we're also integrating the XML APIs, which Cisco makes freely available, very, very powerful programming aspect where we can tie in external applications and environments to managing, uh, you know, reporting, graphing, responding to, taking actions on the XML objects inside of the database itself. That's where we would tie in as well, the management zero. Management one port is not currently in use. The console port is like any other Cisco console port that you would be familiar with already. All right, so in addition to these ports, we're also going to have some fixed ports, and I'll just draw them up here as blue ports, and I'll just draw a few, right? And, you know, my ports uh, always end up looking like Ds. But uh, the 6120s would have 20 of these, the 6140s would have 40, and, of course, the 6248s would have 48. Uh, which means that they actually have 32 built-in ports and then an, a module for up to 16 additional ports. So we're also going to have an expansion module, and I'll just represent it like this, where we may even have some Ethernet ports, and blue in our case is going to be Ethernet. So anytime you see blue, that's going to represent Ethernet. We would also have possibly fiber channel ports on these expansion modules as well. Now, that's one of the improvements in the 6248s is we don't actually need a fiber channel uh, expansion module for the fiber channel ports. It has a unified port capability. So this is just one example of our fabric interconnects and our expansion modules, I should say. 
Other expansion module possibilities would include an eight port fiber channel, and one, two, or four gig uh, ports there. We would see uh, also a six port 10 gig ethernet module, as well as a six port two, four, or eight gig fiber channel expansion module. So it really doesn't matter which ones we go with here. The main thing is that we're gonna see is we wanna provide a symmetric appearance across both fabric A and B. For example, on our uh, blue ports here, our fixed ports, these fixed ports can go north into a land cloud. So let me just draw a little cloud there. And maybe I want to do something like this where I'll draw a land connection there as well as from over here. So again, they don't have to be the same number of, in the same port number, but we do need to same the number of ports. Maybe even from our expansion module, maybe I want to do a, a port channel, right? We can do a little port channel here. And hopefully we're starting to see the picture that whatever I do on the left, I'm going to do on the right. We would do the same thing for our uh, storage area network. So we would have, you know, usually we never have a single sand cloud. So we're going to have maybe a couple of sand clouds up here. And we would do the same thing here. Maybe I want to uh, create a couple of connections from our fiber channel interfaces up to our sand clouds. Now the fiber channel interfaces are only in the expansion modules for the 6120s and 6140s. And the expansion modules only connect northbound. And these ports that we just looked at, these are called uplinks. All right, so we see that uh, if we go north uh, of the land or, or the fabric that connects into the land or sand cloud, we're going to call these uplinks. Now, the, uh, the fixed ports can also come down into our expansion modules. And I'll just cut, I'll just draw, uh, I'll, I, mean, I mean, our chassis, our 5108 chassis. So we also have Cisco 5108 chassis down here that are going to have four power supplies in them, possible power supplies. So power supply one, power supply two, power supply three, and power supply four. These are all 2,500 watt single phase 220 power supplies. And the next generation of hardware, it's uh, supposed to be that they're gonna be three phase 220, but right now they're single phase 220. We're all, in order to connect our fabric interconnects down to the chassis, we're gonna have something called an IOM, an input output module. You know, if you're familiar with the Nexus 5000, 2000 series, this is what they would call a FEX, a fabric extender. And this is going to be our 2104, right? And the, in the new generation of hardware, they, that actually becomes a 2208, where we're going to have eight fabric ports. But in this model, we're going to have four fabric ports, and they're all 10 gig SFP Plus style ports, right? You can connect the IOM ports up to the fabric interconnects via twin X cabling, which is a copper based SFP Plus. You can connect and I'll just draw it around my little B like that. And you could also use you know, fiber optic cabling as well. So this is what we call the unified ports, unified uh, IO, unified fabric it's also called. So this link is called unified because we're gonna be able to carry not just ethernet, but fiber channel as well, as well as InfiniBand if you're doing any high performance computing. Inside of our chassis, we're going to have up to eight possible blade slots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, so these would be our possible blade slots. And we can have, you know, a, a variety of half-width blades, which would be, you know, the B200. We would have the B230. Uh, for the full-width blades, you know, we have the... B250 and the B440. So with the half width blades, you can see we would be able to fit eight of them. With the full width blades, we can fit four. You can also fit any combination of these two blades that fill up the chassis itself. So we have up to 20 of these 5108 blades uh, chassis that can be supported right now by TAC. Physically, if we have the 6140 or the 48, you know, we can go beyond that but the software right now supports 20, and that's what Cisco Technical Assistance Center is going to support as well. So one of the cool things about this uh, solution is that we're going to have this Fabric A, Fabric B configuration, and we're going to configure something known as a service profile. The service profile is simply a uh, software setting 
that is stored on the Fabric Interconnect inside of the 4 gig flash memory, you know, where the configuration database is. And we're going to associate that service profile with a slot of the chassis, meaning one of these eight slots. Very important to remember that the service profile does not associate with the blade, but in fact the slot of the chassis. Therefore, if one of my blades goes bad, we can pull that blade out, put a new blade back in. The blade will be automatically discovered, reassociated back to the profile, if that's how we built our profile, and back up in business, you know, it is. So on these service profiles, we're going to be able to define uh, VNICs and VHBAs, virtual network interface cards on the LAN side, and maybe we might just build a couple of those. And on the storage side, we might build VHBAs, where we would have maybe a couple of these. Now these adapters are going to be uh, configured based on the installed mezzanine card on the blade. And there are different types of mezzanine cards. Uh, the two that we primarily focus on are the, the, uh, the CNA M71, M72CR, um, KR series, I'm sorry, and those are often called the Menlo cards. Uh, we also have a VIC M81KR, also, also called a Palo card, and that VIC stands for Virtual Interface Card. In that case, with the, uh, the VIC, we can see that we can create these virtual interfaces. Matter of fact, depending on the number of connections on our IOMs, up to 58 of them per mezzanine card. So in this simple example, we, we just have two VNICs built, and what I would do is I, I would be able to configure this VNIC to go up fabric A, right, and it's going to exit the, the chassis at the left-hand side. We can tell this VNIC to come this way, thus achieving an active-active pathing for data. So we have two different relationships here to where the, the management is going to have a primary subordinate relationship. Only one of them is active at a time because that's where our, you know, our UCS manager lives. But for data, we're going to be able to have an active-active pathing where our individual blade can, in fact, take advantage of both paths at the same time. And if one of the paths goes down, we can even tell it to fail over to the other fabric. So having full resiliency and redundancy as well. So that's why we have this fabric A, fabric path, fabric B path uh, designation. We have this very symmetric appearance. Whatever we configure on fabric A, we configure on fabric B so that the blades, if and when they need to fail over, they're going to have the same capability on the other fabric and they'll just keep on sending frames, right? Ideally, we will not drop a single frame. All right, so this has been a part one of our video series. There's still quite a bit to cover, but we'll cover that in subsequent posts. And uh, I want to thank you for viewing, and I look forward to seeing you back the next time where we're going to go into further detail about the signaling flow, what layer of the OSI model all of this sits at, how we actually transport fiber channel frames up through the Fabric Interconnects onto the SAN cloud. So I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining me. This is Jeff Hall again. I appreciate your time.